Hello, everybody. Good morning. Today, I want to give you a quick reminder. You're going to start with we need, we need jojoba oil or rosehip oil because we're going to be doing some face yoga and, of course, your journal. Today is your day 19. Welcome to your day 19. 19 days you have showed up and you have broadened your knowledge and your knowledge of yoga. This is just a primer and this is what I think is interesting about yoga. There are so many you can do 30-day series for beginners for the rest of your life, and you'll still not get all of the knowledge of yoga because it's a 5,000-year-old discipline. We are focusing on emotional release today. So this program, this, this, this practice we're doing is about unleashing the magic of yoga and a lot of times we're carrying around so much stuff that what we're carrying, that emotional baggage is crippling us. And so things that want to get out can't. We carry emotional baggage most commonly in our hip flexors, these guys right here, in our shoulders. We hunch them when that goes up to the neck, shoulder and the neck. And then in our jaw. And so we see a lot of people who are dealing with TMJ or, um, or uh, seizing of the jaw where it locks. I once had a panic attack. And right before I had the panic attack, my jaw, um, it clenched up really, really hard. And it, it almost stung how hard, how hard it clenched in the back, the back jaw muscles. It was so interesting and then boom the attack so we are going to look at how we can offer release to these very specific places that means we're going to have to do a hardcore warm-up because we're going to start with the hip flexors so let's do it we're going to begin of course with our fountain of youth the five tibetan rituals and then we're going to do one a warm-up that I find incredibly um, useful and you're ready for it. So we're going to do it. Two hands, side, two feet side by side, pinning the shoulders down, uh, rooting to rise through the shoulders so that our arms can extend um, without hunching them, right? That's part of the, that's part of the word stress comes from. Checking my radius. It's good. Chin is parallel to the ground. Gaze is on the ground. Let's begin. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Bring everything together. Let the spin catch you. Bring eyes to closed. Mm. Camel, shoulders down, shoulders pin towards the heart, ears pin away from the shoulders, they reach away from the shoulders, and our back elbows are yearning for each other, creating this openness in the front side body, which is protective for all of the joints of the front side body. In, oh, and of course, our weight is pushing down into every point of contact with the earth, which allows us to rise farther when we're arching back, safely rise farther. Inhale. Exhale. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Three. Four. Five. 
Jay. The mat gets turned around throughout the day. Okay. With my little things that I'm doing with it. Not straight. Good. Jay. And remember, the modified version, you can bend the legs. You can keep the legs straight and go halfway. You can bend the legs and go halfway. Or you can do the full version. Inhale. One. Two. Three. Four, five. Let's go to the next one, tabletop. Eyes at the elbows pointing towards the front of the mat. Make sure the hands are wide enough. This is my note. Make sure the hands are wide enough to accommodate my seat moving through them. The um, feet are a little less than hip width apart and or at hip width, but not wider. And let's move to tabletop, making sure to practice that protective grip. That's a good reminder for myself. Okay, protective grip is activated. Here we go. One. This is my inhale. Two, exhale. Inhale, exhale from here. Three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, five. Next, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Protective grip on the fingers. The more attention we put to that grip now, the less chance we have of carpal tunnel or some kind of hand or wrist injuries later because it's going to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger to support the practice and the um, activity we are putting on our wrists and hands. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Rolling through like a wave. Inhale. Exhale back. Rolling through like a wave. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Like a wave. Inhale. Exhale. And the last one, inhale. Exhale. Wonderful. And now we're going to very quickly create heat in the body. You can do these for one minute each, or you can do these, we're going to do these for 20 seconds each, only because I want to get into the um, poses and it's already almost 10 minutes in. So we're going to do these for 20 seconds each. And these are just the planks, 20 seconds in each position. And remember, modified will always be knees down um, and full is going to be doing what I do today. And um, no, I'll show you all three. So the time is going to start now. This is full. Hold this for 20 seconds. If you're at medium, you're going to have your knees down, but your weight is still going to be over your um, supported wrists. And if you're doing the, um, the lowest version, the beginner version, then you're going to stay in tabletop. You might have a little bit of weight on your wrists. Okay? And five more seconds, and then that's 20 seconds. Now you're going to bring your left arm right underneath your head and you're going to twist your body. This is side pose, arm comes up. 
This will be what we call the challenge version this time. This will be the beginner version. And let's say, let's say this is the middle actually. And the challenge version will be to bring one leg up or to bring one leg um, all, like out or to even grab that leg. I don't have grabbing it in my practice this morning. <laughs> okay, and let's switch to the other side. So same thing, the right hand is gonna go underneath the head. You're going to swivel your body and you can go where you want to be, beginner, medium, or challenge. But be where you are, each side is different. Don't forget that. Make sure to use your, your protective grip. Make sure if you are, if you have your challenge, the challenge one, that your foot's not resting on your knee like mine just was, either below it or above it, but not on it. And let's switch to the back. So for back, it's almost like tabletop. And for those of you doing the beginner version, you're gonna take tabletop and that's gonna be your, um, your back plank. If those of you, for those of you who would like to do the full, it's going to have your um, eyes focused on the back wall and your hips moving towards the sky. Your, the bottoms of your feet want to be on the ground. And then the middle would be to support yourself where you need one leg uh, or the other leg or um, maybe having the gaze at the sky or in front of you. Okay, five more seconds here. And let everything come down. We'll meet in staff and we'll do the first emotional release pose, which not surprising is pigeon pose. And pigeon's a wonderful emotional release because it's gonna open up those hip flexors and now our body's warm enough to handle that. So if you're doing pigeon pose, we're gonna start with the, start with the legs and tabletop, bring the foot between the two hands and, and bend it down to the knee. So now the knee is between the two hands and the, Left, we're going to start with the right knee forward and the left knee back, left leg back. The left leg is rotated towards the ground so that the whole back of the left leg is facing the sky. This is pigeon. This is pigeon. You can take a bolster and put it right under the hips and you've got pigeon. Okay. Leaving this side that's stretching, the stretch leg, that's the opening of the hip flexor. We want to leave that exposed and open so that it can open. So this is pigeon. Now, if you're feeling like there's a little bit more gas in your tank, no problem. We can go lower. So we're going to, if you want a bit more of a challenge, you're going to move that knee towards the, let's see if you can see, move that knee towards the long side of the mat, towards the right side of the mat. And now I'm going to wiggle my foot up. As I wiggle it up, the closer my foot comes to parallel with the front of the mat, the more important it is to flex my foot. That's going to protect my knee. So I'm going to crawl it towards the front of the mat. And eventually, if you're in the middle, you're doing medium level, you're going to stop between um, zero and 90, which is 45 degrees. And you'll flex your foot and you'll bring your bolster under you, or you can sleep your pigeon. If you aren't full, you're going to walk the whole uh, leg up. And for me this morning, I definitely need support here. I'm not, I'm not straining myself or overstretching my muscles for anything. So I've got my support and I've got my leg where I want it to be. And from here, you can have the back erect. The focus is on this hip flexor staying open and you can walk it down and you can sleep your pigeon. 
You can use a sphinx arms. You can make a pillow under your head. Or you can spread your wings along the earth. That one's not available to me because of this wall. But if it's available to you and you want it, then take it. Remember that as time goes on, your legs will loosen up. And so you want to make sure to notice and pay attention to that so that if you don't need the bolster anymore, you can take it away. Make sure that right foot is flexed. That is meant to protect your knee, your right knee. Mm. Make sure you're breathing here. Build yourself back up piece by piece, gracefully coming out of the pose. The way we get out of the pose is just as important as how we get into the pose. And now you're going to just bring this back leg around, the left leg around, and we're going to prepare to get right into pigeon on the other side. For those of you who take my class, you know that I like to go into fire log after pigeon in between, but we are focusing on these poses. We have a different emphasis today. So we're in table talk. I'm going to first start with my knee um, between moving towards being between my hands from table top. And this is pigeon because you're getting the most important benefit of the pose, which is the openness of this hip flexor on the right side. We've got the left knee forward now. The back of our back of our right leg is facing the sky. Now from here, if we wanna spice it up a little bit, we're going to bring the left knee to the left side of the mat. That's it, okay. If that is feeling good, if you're like, you know what, I've got some, I've got a little farther, a little farther I could take this, you're going to, I'm gonna put a bolster under, and if I don't need it, I'll move it, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And we're going to just wiggle our foot up the mat. You can't see this part. <laughs> That's why I did the right side first. You're gonna wiggle the foot up the mat. And if you're at the medium, you're gonna stop when it's about 90 degrees, okay? If you wanna take it farther, anywhere between 45 and 90, you've got to flex that foot once you choose to stop. And now the goal or the challenge, I guess, would be to have that left shin parallel to the short side of the mat. Okay, and you can kind of see it. Can you see it? That's my leg, that's my foot, and that's the front side of the mat. So from here, 
have this bolster supporting me and I'm glad that I have it. I think I'm gonna take a little bit more support there underneath my left hip. This is stretching my right hip flexor. And now I'm erect and I'm going to sleep my pigeon. And this time I'm going to sleep, I'm going to take um, sphinx arms so that I can keep my shoulder, my shoulders down. I noticed that when I was in pillow, I had to do a lot of work to keep from hunching my shoulders. Even here, I can see that it looks like I'm hunching, but I'm not. And what's nice about that is it's kind of a preview for what we're doing next for our shoulder work. Letting my head hang. There are other things you can do from pigeon that I would recommend doing in either hot yoga or an afternoon class. You can bend the back leg and hook it with your other arm, bend the right leg, but hook it with your right arm and then you have king pigeon, king of the pigeons. King of the pigeons. <laughs> okay, let's get ready to release from this pose. Walk your hands up. Open, you know, roll out and over that left hip. Remove the bolster if you used one. And let's get into a pose that's going to be very helpful for taking stress off of the shoulders. And that is Uttanasana. So for Uttanasana, we typically see Uttanasana in sun, in sun salutations. Tomorrow we're gonna do sun C. So that'll be fun. And so you'll do a lot of Uttanasana. But since we're doing a modified Uttanasana, we're gonna hang out here for a while. Then we're going to just roll down the hips and I'm going to ask that you start with bent knees. So we're gonna roll down through the spine and we're gonna let our bent knees allow our hips to greet our upper body. And that's gonna take a lot of strain off of this, off of this muscle that moves from the middle of our back all the way through to our heels. Um, it's not a muscle, excuse me. That, um, we're not gonna stretch it. There are a lot of other muscles, but there's not one muscle that does what I just described, so excuse me. Our hands are activated as they contact the ground. Our upper body is folded over, and this allows the neck and shoulders to hang. We're not going to try to keep them away from the ground. We're going to let them hang. If you have the flexibility, it's not too difficult. You can bring your legs to straight, but as someone who is just naturally flexible and then does yoga a lot. So I nurture the flexibility six o'clock in the morning. I don't have it without some strain and I'm not going to strain myself. And then from here, you're going to let your head shake. No. Let your head shake. Yes. Let the momentum of the shakes, no, let the momentum of the shakes do the work instead of you. And that's freedom for your neck and head that takes a lot. For that moment, for your shoulders, they are just hanging. We're not stretching them. They're not holding weight. We're not doing thread the needle where we're pulling on them. We're just letting them hang in the opposite direction than they usually do. All of the time, they have to move towards the heart. And for this moment, all they have to do is hang. Now, the as you get stronger in your practice, 
my favorite thing to do for shoulder relief is actually to do a handstand. But the handstand keeps the, instead of letting the eyes look on the ground, which is going to help your balance in a handstand, the eyes would look out. So if you don't even have handstand, but you're comfortable with hurling your legs up against the wall, like if you don't have it to balance, but you're comfortable with bringing your legs up against the wall, you can take that and I'll show you what it looks like for neck and shoulder relief. So you're going to, um, oh, more. Yeah. you're going to look actually out instead of down. And that hanging is just even more powerful. It's even um, easier. You know what? This really just isolates the neck more than the shoulders. So you have to do a bit of work. So um, now I know it's only going to be helpful for the neck and not the shoulders, but this one is getting the shoulders and the neck. Okay, so let's roll up through the spine. And the last place, roll up so that the head comes up last. Ah, so good. The last place is the jaw. So this is where the little face yoga comes in. So for the face yoga, we're going to um, use our oil so that our hands can glide easily across our face. Otherwise we're gonna pull on our face and that's not nice. That's not nice to the skin. Always gentleness, right? Warming up the oil between the hands, pressing the oil into the face. We're only focusing on the jawline. So it's just gonna be about, I just do this because I just do it by default. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is just Spread down. We've got these lymph nodes here, and that's these these lymph drainage places. So that's we're gonna spread and then point the excess down. Okay. And then moving that um moisture that stretching the muscles, moving that tension out of the face and into the lymph nodes where they can be properly disposed of. And now that this part is warmed up, we can look at the jaw specifically. So we started to deal with the jaw here, and now we're just going to take our two fingers. So before there was, it was really the backs of the pointer finger. Now we're going to take the same finger, the pointer finger, we're going to make it like this. And we're going to move it down the jaw. First in smooth strokes. Then pinches. You should start to feel some Good, good pain. It's the pain of release. And now go back to smooth. And now pinch. One more pinch. And lastly, it's one of my favorites, we're going to take our fists this and we're going to press them into this chamber right underneath our cheekbones press them all the way across so have be intentional about each knuckle pushing into that muscle that is for the jaw it's affecting the jaw mm. holding it here mm. Mm. Four, eight, one, and let that go. And then lastly, just a few more 
of these to soften everything that we just did. And there it is. Three emotional places, your hip flexors, your shoulders and neck, and your jaw, and how to release them so that you can show up to the mat and you can show up to life with more freedom. When emotions can move through you, they can't compact, they can't suppress, and you don't have to hide from yourself. And your body won't start to hold the other things and things that you don't want, like fat or stress or tension or pain or sickness. Instead, as emotions can move easily through, so can those other things. And one of the fastest ways to help yourself heal emotionally is forgiveness. So forgiveness is going to also help cycle it through. Remember, this is a holistic effort. We're always working with the physical body, which is what we're doing here but the emotional, mental, and intuitive bodies, the spiritual intuitive. Thank you so much for joining me today on your 19th day of this Sunrise Yoga Series for Beginners, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. I am so proud of you. And of course, I wish you joy, ease, space, and grace. Satnam Namaste.